All right, so I have my iPhone 15 Pro Max here. Now in this particular video, we will be plugging all sorts of stuff into the USB-C port here down at the bottom because that is kind of one of the biggest changes of the iPhone for this year. To begin, we'll start with the basics. We're gonna plug in a thumb drive into the bottom of the iPhone 15 Pro Max here. So this particular thumb drive has a USB-C uh, plug. So we're gonna plug that straight into the iPhone, but let's just unlock the phone first, bring up the files app. So right now you see nothing is plugged in, uh, but if we pop this in, give it a few seconds and we should see USB show up. So yes, reading a thumb drive, not a problem. So the thumb drive was too easy. Next, we're gonna try a 3.5 mil headphone jack adapter. So this is USB-C to 3.5 mil headphone jack. Uh, this is actually from a Pixel phone, so a Google Pixel, not even an Apple accessory. So let's see what happens when we plug this non-Apple adapter into the uh, iPhone 15 Pro Max here. So let's start by getting some audio going. So I hope you hear that. It's playing something now. And we are going to plug this in. So it's still playing through the speakers. I'm going to plug in a headphone. There we go, the audio has stopped. Let me just double check the headphones here. Okay, yes, it is playing through the earpiece here. All right, so it's playing out from the earpiece now, but you probably can't hear it on the camera. So what I'll do is I'll put it up to the microphone, so hopefully you can hear it. All right, hope you guys can hear that, but take my word for it, it is coming out from the uh, headphones here. Next, we have a game controller. So this is the Backbone PlayStation Edition, actually. So they have an iPhone version where it has a lightning port. This is actually the Android one, which has a USB-C port. So I'm pretty sure this will work. They did a firmware update to make sure that the Android one will work on the iPhone, but let's give that a go. So I have the iPhone 15 Pro Max here. Actually, it's a good test to see if this fits a Pro Max. So if you were thinking of getting the Backbone controller, this will be a good test for you to make sure that it works. So yeah, it fits pretty good. I think it was a perfect fit, actually. Oh, wow, look at that. As soon as you plug it in, it uh, launches the Backbone app automatically. Now, I did install the Backbone app already, but I have never attached this to, uh, accessory to the uh, phone yet. Looks like I need to log in. So let me just quickly do that. All right, all set up. So this is the Backbone app main screen. Um, if you've seen it before, then it's pretty familiar. Uh, they make it look like a game console, but yes, everything works. So yes, the Backbone controller works with the iPhones with the USB-C port. Excellent. Just in case people want to see the fit of the iPhone in the uh, Backbone controller here, uh, this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max, so the big iPhone, and it fits, yeah, pretty perfectly, I would say. The camera bump, uh, as you can see, is quite thick down here. And as you can see, this part here is a bit further away from this back part than the edge where the port goes in, but it doesn't really affect when you play the, the games, uh, it looks it looks fine when you look at it from here. And I don't think it's putting any extra pressure on any part of the phone. So I think you're good to go. So if you have a backbone, it will work with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. All right, so we know the backbone was a little bit too easy because we knew there was a firmware update to make it work with the new iPhone 15s with the USB-C port. Next, we're gonna try the PlayStation 5 controller, the DualSense controller, and we're gonna make it work with the PS Remote Play app. So uh, I have a PlayStation 5 in the other room. We're gonna connect the phone to it so that we can play the PlayStation from the phone. While that's doing its thing, I'm gonna plug in the USB-C cable. Oh, look, it's already on already. So we're plugging in the USB-C cable to the Sense controller here. I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit on the phone. So it looks like it's on now. So let's get the phone in view. All right, so that's just the uh, main menu of the PlayStation 5. So I'm gonna press the D-pad here. Yeah, it's working. As you can see, I'm gonna use the, the analog stick. It's, it works. Yeah, you can, you can plug in a DualSense controller to your iPhone. Pretty cool. All right, since these iPhones are for pros, let's try something you know, maybe more professional. So I have a Rode Wireless Go 2 here. This is the receiver. And I also have 
a transmitter here, so basically the microphone part. So I'm gonna plug this into the iPhone and we're gonna open the voice recorder app or the voice memo app. So I think this is the easiest way to show whether or not the microphone is working. So I will start the recording. So as you can see, the waveform at the bottom is, is kind of small, not very, not very loud. Uh, I'm gonna tap the microphone. And as you can see, as I was tapping it, the waveform is spiking. So yeah, we can confirm that it is actually using this microphone. So yeah, this works. You can plug in a, in a wireless mic or an external mic through the USB-C port and the iPhone will work. So just to confirm, I'm gonna bring this microphone to my mouth here. So hello, hello, hello. This is me talking into the microphone. And as I bring the microphone away again, the waveform drops down. So yeah, works, excellent. Well, what happens if you don't have a USB capable microphone? What if you have a shotgun mic? like this. Well, let's see if we can use this 3.5 mil headphone jack with a TRS to TRRS cable to see if we can get the shotgun mic to work with the iPhone. So let's plug this into the phone first and then we're going to plug the TRS end, the one with the less rings, to the shotgun mic like this and then we're gonna bring up the uh, voice memos again so let's do that quickly voice memo and we are going to start a new recording so that's recording now so as you can see the waveform is quite low if I start tapping that microphone there we go it's quite high so if I bring this towards my mouth hello hello one two three hello one two three hello one two three hello one two three and away again so yeah it works all right, next we're pulling out the big guns. We're pulling out the DisplayPort cable. So I have a USB-C to DisplayPort adapter here. I am gonna plug this into my phone and I'm gonna plug the other end into the DisplayPort cable over here. And my monitor has actually switched to my computer. So let me just quickly change the inputs for the monitor here. So I switched it to the iPhone. Oh, there we go. The cable may be a little bit loose, but yep, there we go. We have an image on the screen. Pretty cool. All right, so DisplayPort works, which is pretty good. But how about HDMI? Because most TVs have HDMI cables. So let's plug in a USB-C to HDMI adapter into the iPhone like this, and then plug the other end of the HDMI cable to the phone so this is all connected now let's see what happens Whoop. straight away there we go it works how about an ethernet adapter so we have a, just a generic gigabit ethernet adapter and the iphone here we're going to plug the phone into the adapter and then i'm going to plug in this ethernet cable which goes to my router into the adapter here and then this is all plugged in now we're going to turn off the mobile data and the Wi-Fi. So we should have no data at this point. Uh, let's turn on airplane mode just in case. And we're gonna see if we have any connection. So let's do a speed test. Uh, test here. Let's go to Chrome, do a speed test. I mean, the fact that Chrome loads is means this is all working. So speed test, here we go. Yep, it's working on airplane mode with Wi-Fi off and mobile data off and the speed test is running. Lights are blinking. Pretty cool. And also in the settings, it says there's Ethernet. There it is. All right, so let's also try a keyboard. So this is a USB-C keyboard I have here. So let's plug this into the iPhone and see what happens. So the keyboard is on as you can see by the rainbow. Yep, we can bring up Spotlight Search. We can type things on it and words appear or characters appear in the backspace. Yep, keyboard works. So what happens when you plug a Android phone into your iPhone? Well, let's give that a go. So I have the USB-C cable here and we are going to plug it into my Pixel 7 Pro on the side here and it looks like it says charging this device via USB. So if we tap on this, we can actually 
at the bottom here, choose whether to charge the other connected device. So if we do that, the iPhone starts charging. So I guess the Android has more options for you to control which device charges what. The iPhone kind of doesn't surface those kinds of controls. So uh, if it's an Android device you're plugging into, then yes, you can control it. If it's another iPhone, then basically the device with more power will always charge the device with less power, which I wish there was a way to stop that because maybe you have a donor device that has less power that you want to just boost up the other one. Um, but yeah, you can't do that if it's two iPhones. All right, so we've been plugging accessories into the iPhone 15 Pro Max here. Now I'm going to plug a charger into the phone. Uh, this is a 120 watt charger here with a 100 watt rated power cable and I've got a power meter here just to see what kind of power it's going to draw. Now the phone itself is on 81% so I don't think it will draw the full 29 or 27 watts that it's capable of taking but let's just see what happens when we plug it in. So it's plugged in. Uh, I can see it's ramping up there. The bottom number here is the wattage. So 8.6, 8.7, looks like it's stabilizing at, you know, 8.6-ish watts. So I suspect it's drawing less wattage because the phone is you know, not very low. It's, it's kind of full, actually. But if we start something, you know, maybe a little bit more intensive like Pokemon, the wattage ramps up a little bit. It went to nine for a second there. So it looks like, it depends on what you're doing on the phone, uh, you can get higher charging speeds if you know your phone is not very low, like mine right now. I suspect if the battery was lower, we'll see a much higher wattage being drawn from the charger here. So there we have it. Basically, anything you can plug into the USB-C port of the iPhone works. So we have microphones, we have game controllers, we have game pads, we have thumb drives, we have DisplayPort adapters, HDMI adapters, we also have Ethernet adapters, and also 3.5mm headphone jack adapters. Basically anything works. How un-Apple this is. Um, but anyway, I hope this is useful, and thanks for watching. Basically anything works. Oh wait, I didn't try a mouse.